Hi, folks. I'm feeling a little rocky today, so I'm going to slick up a rerun for you. I hope to be making new episodes again soon. Wish me well, and I'll see you then. Hi there, and welcome to this day in history for November 19th. November 19th is the 323rd day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, 324th in leap years, with 42 days remaining to the end of the year. Today's word is farce. Farce can be a noun or a verb. As a verb, farce means stuff, like to stuff, like stuffed crab or stuffed tomatoes. This particular definition arrived in the English language around the 1500s as a synonym for something called force meat, which was what they called a finely chopped and highly seasoned meat or fish that would be served alone or used as a stuffing. This usage of the word farce came to English by way of French, Latin before that. Another use of this particular meaning is to improve or expand something, such as a literary work, by stuffing, as in stuff more words into that baby, that'll fix it. Of course, this meaning is rarely, if ever, used, and really, if you're going to see farce used as a verb, it's usually going to be in the culinary sense. The definition that will be more familiar to most folks is as a noun, where it means a light grammatic composition marked by broadly satirical comedy and improbable plot, or the broad humor characteristic of farce. Monty Python and the Holy Grail is a great example of this definition of farce. Farce can also mean an empty or patently ridiculous act, proceeding, or situation. For example, the recall of an elected official for some frivolous reason might be considered a farce. As I mentioned before, the word farce came to English from French, Latin before that, and first documented use of any of these definitions was in the 1500s. Farce. And with that, today we're going to start in the year 1862, when American baseball player and evangelist Billy Sunday was born. Not that outstanding, but pretty entertaining as a baseball player and very successful as an evangelist in the days before electronics. He died in 1935 at the age of 72. In 1863, well, yesterday was the travel day for Lincoln and today is the day he actually delivered the Gettysburg Address, one of the most memorable speeches in American history. In fewer than 275 words, he brilliantly and movingly reminded a war-weary public of why the Union had to fight and win the Civil War. In June of 1941, despite the terms of the Nazi-Soviet Pact of 1939, Nazi Germany launched a massive invasion against the USSR, and so on this day, November 19th of 1942, the Soviet Red Army launched the Great Soviet Counteroffensive that turned the tide in the Battle of Stalingrad. In 1959, the Ford Motor Company announced the discontinuation of the unpopular Edsel. In 1998, Vincent Van Gogh's portrait of the artist without beard sold at auction for $71.5 million. That's a lot of money for a, for a painting. And it tells you how you can prosper when you kind of clean up a little bit. I might take that part out. <laughs> November 19, 2001 was the first World Toilet Day. Yes, you heard me right. World Toilet Day. You just never know what you're going to find when you're researching this day in history. World Toilet Day is an official United Nations International Observance Day on November 19th to inspire action to tackle a global sanitation crisis. Worldwide, 4.2 billion people live without safely managed sanitation, and around 673 million people practice open defecation. Toilets are important because access to safe, functioning toilets have a positive impact on public health, human dignity, and personal safety, especially for women. Sanitation systems that do not safely treat excreta allow the spread of disease, and serious soil-transmitted diseases and waterborne diseases such as cholera, 
diarrhea, typhoid, dysentery, and schistosomiasis can result. I got to tell you, as I was doing the research on today's song, Mr. Bowers asked me what I was doing. <laughs> I said, I'm doing the research for tomorrow's song. He said, that seems like a lot of writing for one song. <laughs> I said, well, I fell into some interesting information that I want to share with my audience. And then I went on to tell him what I'm about to tell you. And that is that from 1962 to 2009, the songwriting and production team known as Holland Dozier Holland wrote and produced over 150 songs. Because of the volume of work they did and the artists they primarily worked with, they had a lot to do with what we now know as the Motown sound. They were good at it too. Something like 35 of those 150 plus songs ended up in the top 10. Groups like the Supremes, Marvin Gaye, the Marvelettes, Martha and the Vandellas, the Four Tops, and more were some of the stars they worked with. Within that portfolio, you have, for example, How Sweet It Is to Be Loved by You, originally recorded by Marvin Gaye in 1964. Later covered by Junior Walker and the All-Stars, the Elgins, Joan Osborne, Liz Lands, Ruby Turner, Michael Buble, The Grateful Dead, and James Taylor. I'm sure you've heard at least one of those versions. As amazing as that is, that isn't even the song I want to talk about today. <laughs> nope, today's song is You Keep Me Hanging On by The Supremes. As with How Sweet It Is to Be Loved by You, You Keep Me Hanging On has also been covered by notable artists like Vanilla Fudge, Kim Wilde, Rose Banks, Wilson Pickett, Mary Wilson, Reba McIntyre, and Rod Stewart. We're talking about it today, though, because You Keep Me Hanging On by the Supremes hit number one on November 19, 1966 and held that position for two weeks. Link in the description. And I think that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share this video with a link in your email, messaging, or social media. If you enjoy this series, you can check out the playlist that contains these videos. I'll put a link to that in the description. That description lives on YouTube, so for other platforms, I'll include the link to my blog page that is called, no really. <laughs> you can also find me on Rumble, BitChute, all those links in that description. Alrighty, that's all I can think of right now. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.